My name is uh, Ollie Blackburn and I'm the farm manager here at Dillington Estates. Um, we're here at Not Oak Dairy, which is the mainstay of our farming business. The wider estate is, um, is quite diverse and is owned by uh, Ewan Cameron, who, is, uh, who uh, took over from his father about six years ago, not long after we, we built Not Oak Dairy in its current format. Uh, we, we, we built Not Oak uh, at, at the bottom of our old dairy farm, um, sort of the bottom, bottom side of the site, w with the view of uh, utilising ro robotics for the future. One thing that the Cameron family and, uh, and Chris, the previous farm manager, were aware of, that labour might become quite difficult to, to source in the future. and We wanted to build a really good system that was attractive to, uh, to staff going forward. Uh, the unit itself is uh, comprised of six, six individual uh, Lely robots, uh, A4 robots. We're milking around 310 cows uh, on an all-year-round calving system. They're fully housed um, with only the dry cows and the pregnant young stock uh, going out to grazing. And um, yields have been gradually increasing over, over the last six, seven years. Historically, we, we had a period of time where we were organic. And the decision was taken whilst we were organic to, to start the crossbreeding process. It's become a more finely tuned uh, system these days. And we've uh, been working with a three-way cross of Holstein, Norwegian Red and Fleck V. Um, with, with some advice from Genus, we've sort of developed that forward. And the cows that we've got today are, are producing just shy of 11,000 litres a year. Um, it's one of the things that we really want to focus on uh, over the next few years is how we how we fine-tune that crossbreeding further and the debate is currently centered around whether we temporarily uh, drop one of the three-way crosses um, to see if we can sort of have a more uniform cow um, and, and push those yields a little bit further. We would say that the the arable system massively benefits what we can do with the dairy in terms of forage production. Um, we've got quite a large mid-tier uh, environmental enterprise which we we've also looked at from the basis of how we improve the farm generally but also how we utilize uh, the environmental options to benefit not oak and of course the dairy is a massive massive um, uh, benefit to the to the wider rotation and the wider estate with the utilization of uh, slurry fyms and also uh, the ability to grow things like spring beans which is giving us legumes um, and helping us reduce our inputs across the arable enterprises yeah, we've got quite a varied land type across the farm. Um, a lot of it's sort of sandy, sandy clay, sandy, sandy silt loams, a um, little bit of sort of heavier, heavier ground towards the river. Um, we're trying to come up with a rotation post potatoes that, that really, really fits and gives us, um, uh, helps us achieve our focus of reducing our inputs and utilizing slurries and digestate. Um, so at the moment we've got uh, wheat, maize, uh, red clover grasses, environmental grasses in, in the form of GS4 herbal lays, spring beans, um, quite a large area of maize. And we've also been playing with some, um, with some whole crops. So this year we did a, a triticale and legume mix uh, as, a, as a bit of an experiment. Um, and, we're, and we're looking, we're always open to new cropping options, but it has to has to sort of fit the diversity that we're looking for across the wider estate. So yeah, the cows, the cows have gradually been increasing their yield since, since we started with the robotic system, sort of seven years ago. Uh, we're currently uh, running um, around about 11,000, just shy of 11,000 litres sold. The butter fats tend to, tend to be hovering around the 4.2 with the proteins at sort of 3.45, 3 3.5. Um, the real, the real big thing that we're trying to get going on the estate is what what can we grow on the estate, reduce the mileage and the carbon footprint um, for those products, and and still get the milk production. And currently, the the cows are producing uh, just shy of 4,000 liters from forage, um, which we're very pleased with. So, so in terms of team, uh, we're really, really lucky. Got a very, very skilled team. Uh, Lou Thorner is uh, our herd manager and he's heading up the day-to-day -day cow management here at Not Oak. Uh, assisting him very closely is uh, Gabriel Laszlo. Uh, Gabriel actually was with us during our potato days and transitioned across the dairy and has fitted in very, very well. Um, Tim Brown does all of our feeding and um, 
and has been with us for a, for a, for a lot of years and does a fantastic fantastically consistent job uh, of getting the getting the feed in front of the cows. And on young stock, we've got uh, Jess Kilrow, and she's she's heading everything up all the way from birth through through to um, through to young stock breeding and ultimately to calving in. Um, and then they're supported by the sort of wider estate team. Uh, there's not many of us really. Um, there's myself uh, heading up sort of the whole of the farming side. Ashley Page, who's the assistant farm manager for the estate. Uh, Lindsay Livingston, Ollie Smith, and um, Roy Whitcomb, uh, with a little bit of help from some neighbours and uh, some self-employed help in the form of Ben Turpey. The estate uh, was assessing its future in dairy, and the decision was taken if we were going to remain in dairy, and how would we, how would we build a system that was fit for the future? And one of the main concerns uh, around dairy for the future was the availability of labour. So the decision was taken to utilise the technology that was available in robotics, um, build a new shed, um, hopefully have it as a very attractive place to work and be employed, um, in the hope that uh, whether it was at that stage or at any stage in the future that we were able to attract uh, really, really good staff and, and keep them here uh, in a really good working environment. The big bonus, aside from the staff um, appeal to, to the robotics, is just how friendly it is towards the cow welfare. The cows are very relaxed. In this shed today, there's 310 cows in milk, about another 25 dry cows. And the one thing I always like to show anybody who comes round is that for the most part, we can hear a pin drop. It's very quiet, it's very calm. That's all credit to the team as well in the way they go around handling the cows, but it's also the way that the robotics allow the cows to move about their daily business. Um, so the biggest change over the last couple of years that we've made to the estate is the implementation of our mid-tier uh, countryside stewardship scheme. We basically sat down with a blank map of the estate and, and tried to work out what was working well for us and, and what was working less well. Uh, focusing on uh, the topography and the geography of the farm, we wanted to come up with something that, that helped us deal with potential erosion issues, was sympathetic to our uh, residential neighbours. Uh, sort of farming on the edge of Illminster is something we have to be really focused on is, is how we integrate with the local population. So what we came up with, it was a way of putting in sort of 15 meter grass headlands uh, around all of our arable fields. And, and this has been great because although they're not organic, they're farmed in an organically synthetic way. So um, no chemicals, uh, organic manures only. And, and that's moved our commercial farming enterprises uh, more central uh, in, into the fields. So short, short term goals for us at the moment is to, is to uh, really keep our focus on on the homegrown foragers and and how we can grow things across the estate that benefit that wider rotation and and feed in from hopefully what will be a carbon neutral point of view in the future uh, for, from a dairy point of view uh, the dairy in, in its in its um standalone format is always going to be perceived as fairly intensive and our real mission in the short term is to make sure that everything's feeding into this system is very extensive, giving us a really nice balance and blend between sort of environmental benefit and ultimately food production, which is what we're here to do.